and see what he can do in the midst of unbelievers on the leading edge with his word, his power, his grace, and his mercy. For God's sakes, we're Lutheran. This is what we know. Okay. Oh, that's what's up, man. You hang up in my face now, and now we're back on. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's all good. It's all good. I'm going to have grace. Y'all, man. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, listen, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, man, you got to give me. Hold on, Lex. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Millennials don't even know what that is, man. It's a phone hanging up. You know what I'm saying? That's why I call it hanging it up. <sighs> you banging on somebody. So look. Yo, you got to give me absolution, man. You got to give me absolution, bro. Y'all good. Y'all good. On good Friday. So look. <laughs> um. Uh, Wittenberg Project. We got my yeah, boy yeah. Cam. Cam in the building with me. What up? Um, so we've been trekking along, you know, making good progress, you know. So as I mentioned before, when Malekton wrote this, he wrote it in a way where it's um in order. Things mm-hmm. that the Christian needs to know and has to know about the faith, the essentials. Mm-hmm. So we started with, you know, sin, law gospel now the next chapter is grace so as you can see in the chapter after that is justification and faith so as you can see he's explaining like the sin why the fall this and this and our, our state law why our state is sinful mm-hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? then he goes into the gospel of what christ is and did now we're talking about grace yeah and um one thing that so this right here honestly it's one of the shorter chapters so far. Mm-hmm. So off bat, so it might not think it's as deep, but I mean I won't say it's a hard read, but he covers a lot. Like first off, Melanchthon has no problem throwing side jabs at other philosophers and theologians. Yeah, yeah. And he starts this one off literally like round four. He's coming in. Bang bang. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on grace in a sense? Man, one, um, I love, I'm, I, I immediately think about the passage uh, where it says he gives grace upon grace um, f- um, for the law. Can, and then in John, that's uh, I think it's in Timothy or Romans that he says in uh, uh, John, he says, uh, the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Like, I feel as though grace is the, th- the one thing that separates us a lot from a lot of other, actually every other religion, be- because um Oftentimes, like other faiths, uh, they spend so much time trying to please their their deity, so to speak. Matter of fact, I have a good friend who who I love, who's she's Muslim, and she's it's, it's during like she's uh, in the middle of Ramadan right now, right? right. And yeah, so, right. yeah, and so that's a really hard fast for people that don't know. And um, but I, but my whole time, I'm like, where's grace? Where's the concept of grace in Islam? You know, but it's. It's not about what we do. It's about what God has done to us and given to us. That's what grace is, you know? Yeah, and that's a great... I like the way you ended that, what God has given to us. Yeah. The one thing with LinkedIn, when he starts off the chapter, he talks about how the term grace in the Bible, uh, from like the, and I'm not an expert on Greek, so I'm not going to pretend like I am, but the way he goes about it is he mentions how it's translated as gratia a lot. But he's like, actually the correct... A more accurate uh, representation of the word that's in the text should be favor. Mm. And he goes on to mention how grace, like a lot of people view grace as some substance or something like quality in us or given to us or that's the, you know, in a sense. But he, he actually goes into it saying that grace is um, it's the kindness of God to us or the merciful will of God for us. Mm-hmm. One of the definitions that he likes to say. And um, I wrote down a couple little a couple little things, you know what I'm saying? Like one, one thing he mentions is, is now don't forget, he's translating as favor. You know what I'm saying? saying that would be kind of a more accurate representation of a lot of passages. Yeah, and, oh, careful, careful. Can't talk about favor in the, in, you know, in the Lutheran church too much. Yeah, careful with faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because in our context, favor has a different meaning also. I guess that's a yeah. great point, especially especially from from your background. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get the feeling just fall out on them. You know what I'm saying? But look, you know what I'm saying? But 
I can't, man. I can't. I can't. <laughs> but oh. that's a great distinction. We're not talking about favor as in God's going to bless you with a Porsche. Come you know on, man. With a Lambo. Facts. Right, right, right. right I mean, right, I'll right. take a Lambo, but you know. No, no, no. I, and if any one of our people watching want to get that to the Whitmer Project, <laughs> you wanna, I so will see. share with Cam. We, we, we can <laughs> share it. Yes. And the stage is, he'll just, he won't even know about it. We'll share it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, look, check it out. All right. So favor, not in the sense that's used today in a lot of places. It's more so Let's stick with the definition he gave of merciful will of God for us. Yes. For kindness of God, of God to toward us. us. Oh. Not your bank account. Oh. Not God getting rid of your athlete's foot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's mercifulness to us and for us. So the definition yes. I'm about to read, that definition for the sentence I was about to read is, is because he's favorable to us, he pours out his gifts to us. Now, that can go sideways also with the current definition. Yeah. But he, he digs in a little deeper and says, the gift is the Holy Spirit. Spirit himself, yes. That's Come on. the gift. Come on. You know, and then he uh, uses, and throughout this chapter, it's a lot of Bible passage references. Oh, I didn't yeah. write them all down. I do want people to read the book. So I'm not going to go sentence by sentence, which I wish I could, but, you know, yeah. hey, I'm not. You know, but he says, a, a scripture he uses to justify his stance is, is, he breathed on them, and God said, receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. John 20, yep. The insufflation. Yeah. Yeah. The fancy so, word. Yeah. Yeah, so he uses that. He has other passages also to show that's the gift. That is the favor he's given to us, you know. Because of the parable, we, we are receiving God inside of the Holy Spirit, you know. Yeah. And then from grace, we have forgiveness, mercy, and kindness of God. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm -hmm. And the works of the Holy Spirit, love, but well, faith, love, and joy, I think it is, or yeah. faith, yeah. peace, and joy, something like that. But yeah, it, 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 when you view it all in a grand picture, you see how it all trails off once you understand grace is him being favorable to us because he's favorable towards people. He is giving us the Holy Spirit and things of that nature, which then follows and leads to those works and things of that nature that's right that's right the greatest gift we could ever receive is the spirit of god you know what i mean right right and then later on he even mentions how the holy spirit is a gift that gives us new life and sanctifies our hearts like yes you know yes. like like you said that's the best gift ever and all that's encompassed in grace oh man oh uh, and i love the and you know and that's so powerful because let me say from my background too like I was listening to something that really challenged me, um, but a lot of people, I think they overhype the spiritual gifts sometimes. Um, yeah. Now, Paul I got, said. I'll tell you a little. I got in trouble for something I said a couple years ago about that. Keep going. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, no, Paul said, listen, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, but I will show you a more excellent way. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I think the most beautiful thing that the Holy Spirit does in us is, is when you see a heart transform, when you see a life transform, whether or not they speak in tongues or not, man. Like, um, I got, I got to put a plug in for, uh, Dr. Leopold Sanchez's Sculptor Spirit. Um, that's a good book where he, he talks a lot about the sanctifying process. And yeah. then, uh, uh, Joel Cooper's, um, what is it? Christification. Um, Christification. Christification. Yeah. Like the, uh, the Lutheran approach to theosis. That's a good one too. Right. Where it talks about the, the, the spirits, the, the, to me, that's like the greatest miracle, you know what I mean? Like seeing somebody's life transform. Right. No, it really is. It really is. Like, it's a beautiful thing when you really see that the gift that God gives us, like, something, to, us knowing that this, this life isn't forever. Right. The gift he gives us is forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. We're focused on the, this temporal gifts of, oh, X, Y, Z is so hard. This is not, oh, man, if God would get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, that would be nice if he did. But if he doesn't, he's giving you the best gift ever. A gift where if he was like, here's A, here's B. Any reasonable person is going to choose the Holy Spirit. Come on. And you can put whatever earthly thing you want in this right here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, like I said, it, it, it's a beautiful thing when you break it down and you realize the the gift of the Holy Spirit 
and yeah. I'll call it uh, which grace, you know. It's it's just it's amazing. It's it's so amazing. Yeah, it literally is. Um, because you know, like um, um, like when a person, um, I love how Titus says, um, he says that's not according to what we have done, but but um, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but he's he washes, regenerates us through the Spirit, right? Um, I think that I think that I think that new coming into Lutheranism. I've said this before on Twitter, like, like I think a lot of times people are afraid of being pietist, but like there's a difference between like piety and pietism. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, yeah, very much. And, so. Like, I, I think that I think that we could talk about holiness a little bit more um, as Lutherans. I'm just just saying, just saying. Um, yeah. But we know it's the spirit working in us, not our own. Yeah. Self discipline. Yeah, and I think a lot of the problem with that is is. We have got as a society, culture, Western world, so used to the concept of is we go to church and yeah. we go home. Yeah. Now we'll both sit here and agree that we talked about before. In church, I want to hear about Jesus. Yes. Gospel and what he did for me. You know? Yes. And the the Christian life does come up in sermons every now and then. But the focus is always Jesus. Right. I say all that to say in Bible study, I've been, they've been they kill these topics. They go through, you know what I'm saying? They yeah, yeah. Further study of things, but a lot of people are they view church as an hour. Mm. And if if, if if a pastor's giving you a 20 minute sermon, he's going to talk more about Jesus than that part. Right. And I can't even get mad and say he, he, sh he should he should flip it. Of course. When you flip it, you get into the dynamic of now we're talking about better living. Yeah, and it's real easy to get to get back into the law. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Right. But so I sure. totally agree with you. As an overall Lutheran culture, we should talk more about holy living, uh, the works of the Holy Spirit, pretty much. Yeah. I think that we cover that a lot in our studies, in, in, in the, you know, you see what I'm saying? In the mm -hmm. uh, the Bible studies and this and that nature, because in the service, I'm trying to break you down and give you Christ and show you your forgiveness, your need of your need of the forgiveness of sins. You have sinned. Here's Christ. Right. And Kill it with the uh, I, with the law. Bring it back to the law. Yeah, the I don't want to give you rock, rabbit trails that people are easy. Hey, a gummy bear, and <laughs> end up all the way over here all the time. Like it's squirrel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so used to self justifying naturally, and wanting to do those things where any little thing will run off and take our eyes off Christ. Yeah. So, I, but I totally agree with you though. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I yeah, totally yeah, yeah. With you, you know, yeah. I do wish that we would put more not emphasis, but it would non-sermon speaking that that type of life, vocation, sanctification, would be more primary issue or primary thought. Yes. In us, Amen. you know what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah, yeah. And and as long as we to tie it back into grace, um, as long as we connect the dots for people, because like when I, I would my issue you know, coming up in Pentecostal or whatever kind of churches was like, people would be like, uh, the holiness would be preached, the law would be preached, right? But then they wouldn't incorporate the gospel at the very end. So I would leave the service thinking like, okay, he said, be holy. I got to go out and I got to like be more mentally tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, I gotta... no. See, and this is where uh, me and you are very similar. I, I was I was a meth head. I was a, a, a meth head. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I was a meth head. You know what I'm saying? Meth head. You know what I'm saying? And they're yeah. big on holy living. Yeah. That's where y'all get it from. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes, like, I can't blame playing Costco. Sometimes when you eat a nice, greasy burger, that fat's going to stay with you. It's not the most healthiest. You know and you guys just kept that remnant of the grease. You know what I'm saying? Five guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all kept all that lard that was there. It should have been trimmed when y'all broke true. off. You know what I'm saying? Very true. But y'all like that fat. You know what I'm saying? Very true. Yeah. But no, but on real talk though, um, no, you're right. You know, you end up leaving thinking more about how can I be more holy? How can I be more holy? You know? And that's one of the amazing things back when I first started converting over was that I left thinking about Jesus. Come, that's it. Come on, man. Listen, you know? come on. Like, um, you, do you listen to um, "You Are Forgiven"? 
No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay, plug for you. I forgive it. It's a fifteen seventeen joint. But uh, anyway, it's it's pure. Like I um I gave it to a, I turned on on a, I turned a Baptist friend on to it. I was like, hey man, it's not necessarily. It's just pure gospel. And he was like, I really enjoy listening to it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Cause it's it's just Christ and Him crucified. I love it. I don't I, I don't even tell people the resources I give them are Lutheran. Oh right right right. I don't even tell right. them that. I mean, cause right. to me, like I said, it, it's just they go in back thinking, oh, this is different than what I'm normal. No, nah, just listen to it. Check it out. You don't have to go in here with a what's different. What's this? No, they soak on you. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, I mean, I hate to bring it to street level, but it's almost like telling your friend who you know is a blood, be like, yo, man, listen to this tape from this crib. It's like, huh? Right. All right. I might not have. Uh, he might not be my op. He kind of is an op, you know. Yeah. No one's kind of suspect. And this, that, nah. Just hey, man, listen to this. What is it? Let's listen to it. It's, it's about this topic that we both love. Okay. That's it. You know. That's so, it. Hey, I, I love that you're sharing that with them. You know, because like I, I share um like forty minutes in the Old Testament. Oh man, that's. You know what I'm saying. I share that, but I just tell people it's just them breaking down the Old Testament, which it is. Yes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. They don't need to know the background. You know what I'm saying? Mhm. Mm For sure. Yeah, yeah. It's it's either if regardless of your of your your faith tradition, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Forty minutes in the Old Testament, they just go line by line. It's good exegesis. Yeah, good. yeah. I, I I try to trick all my heterodox friends becoming. Lutheran, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on the under, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, low key, yeah, yeah. I got, a, I got an agenda. Come on, you already listen, know. Listen. Hey, I have no problem <laughs> with that. Like for the ladies, I will flirt to convert. For the fellas, you know what I'm saying? You be missionary <laughs> dating. You be missionary <laughs> dating. <laughs> oh lord, oh lord. You know what I'm nah, we good. <laughs> we good. <laughs> but and if a guy. I'll just throw a nugget of truth out there and let them get tempted by a nugget to, to learn more about it also. You know what I'm saying? Very true. Yeah, yeah. Very true. You know, so, nah, Take the seeds. Yeah, you got you to you gotta throw it out there. You got to cast it out there. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, this is something that Flame always talks about. Hey. I, would take that, I, I, I don't mind mentioning him because he's my people, but yeah. it, it feels like I'll be name dropping. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's a brother, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it's like me mentioning Cam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but one thing he mentioned all the time is is it's like he's found this treasure and he just wants to share it. Come on, you know what yes. I'm saying? I totally relate to that. It's like, bro, I, I'm gonna try to get this out to people as much as possible because I've been in a lot of those situations where I'm doubting things and and this and that. Like uh, I remember uh, back when I was younger, and um, I was talking to my friends about Jesus and stuff. And as I got older, I started watching the apologetic videos about how to convert people, and they're so law heavy. Yeah. And I realized, yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm crap at sharing the gospel because I'm talking about God's love. I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you're, you, you sin, this and that, but Christ came, this and this, this and this. Not. Law, 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 law. God. You mean like like the like the way the monster, uh, way the master type, like. Yeah, well, I'm not I'm not just harping on the wrath of God's on you, wrath of God's on you. You're going to hell, wrath of God's on you, wrath of God's on you. It's more so Christ has died for you because He loves you. He died Come for on. you while you're sinners. This, yes. this, I'm more so going that route. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's more so the grace package I'm trying to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Then being stuck in the law sin section of the chapters we're going by. Yes. And you know, I this time, yes. This time convert someone with the law and sin, like I don't want you to feel so horrible. Hey, might as well. I'm not saying it doesn't work because we have to preach the law. You know what I'm saying? Gotta preach it, yeah. But if you don't focus on the grace part, you end up with people just focusing on better living. And it's so much more than that, you know. It's so it's 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 not even, and that and you're right because um because um when you like one it drives people either to despair or to self righteousness, right? Because either they look at it and they're like, oh well, I can't I can't f fulfill all of this, so maybe I'm gonna th throw all of this stuff out, right? But then on the flip side, you have people who are like, well. They look at others they're like, well, I'm not doing what so and so is doing. Like, uh, like that. Remember, like the Pharisee with the dude in the temple, 
the my, the parable of Jesus. My, as, as, as my friend Zion, shout out to him. He's a, he, he told me one time, he said, I know your favorite passage of the Bible. I'm like, what? And he was all, uh, he quoted the last part. You know what I'm saying? Be merciful for me, a sinner. Yes. You know what That's saying? it. That's I was, it. I was like, whoa, bro, how you know that? He's like, he's like, like, he's like three times a year, you just start tweeting that. I'm like, yeah, bro, that's my favorite passage. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yo, so I know, I know exactly Luke 13. I know exactly the part you're talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, yeah, he, the other guy was like, man, just, he didn't even look up to heaven. He just said, have mercy on me, a sinner. Just beat his breast. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Man. And that's, and that's it, man. And the first guy was like, I, I want to thank God. And he was sincere. I want to thank you that I'm not like Jimmy over here who's on crack. And I want to thank you I'm not like Titus. Yo, dude's a thief. Come on. Like, Come on. Like, wow, bro. Like, and what's wow, the like, only reason? Yeah. The only like, reason he's different. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, like the only reason he's different is because of the grace of God. That's right. even if he even if he is different, that's the only reason is because of the grace. God, God, the, the way God distributes his grace is entirely up to him, you know? And um, just because I don't struggle with that. Doesn't mean I'm I'm superior. I'm struggling with something else, but it's the grace of God that I might not struggle with that. But it don't right. mean that you know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like it's just amazing, you know. So um, that's the grace part. You know what I'm saying? That's our synopsis of it. I definitely think people should check this book out. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So yes. what I'm gonna say was is if you got time, we can stop this one and then do another episode about whatever. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Signing off. Winner Project. I'm my boy Cam in the house. Lex, um, sign off. Thanks for thanks for watching. All right.